Hey you guys, what's going on? It's Teenage Night, and I am here for my Oklahoma Dynasty Season 4 Offseason. And if you didn't watch the last video, um, I'm going to give you five seconds before I spoil it. One, two, three, four, five. Alright, that was enough time for you guys to get off this video and go watch the other one and then come back to this. But, uh, we did win. We won our second national championship in four years. This one we actually did right. We went completely undefeated. Um, we had a few close games. We had a few blowouts in our season. And then the national championship came down to the last minute. So, yeah, it was a pretty interesting season. And um, I did accidentally already advance to uh, the end of the bowl season. So we're going to go see how all the other bowls went. But first, we're going to go check on stats. Let's see how we did as a team this year. Okay. Baker Mayfield, um, not my favorite quarterback to use so far in this series. He underthrew a lot of passes, and he wasn't that accurate with the deep ball, which cost me a lot because that's what, like, 50% of my offense is, the way I run things, is that I like to take chances deep downfield, and he doesn't really have the arm power for that. But, you know, we went undefeated, so I can't complain too much. But he had over 4,000 yards, 30 TDs, and 19 picks. A lot of those picks were bad reads by me, but some of them were just underthrown passes. He even had one in the national championship where I had Jeffrey Meade open in the end zone and he threw it behind him and almost got picked off, which would have ticked me off pretty bad. But he was sacked 33 times, which isn't good. But once again, that's a part of my offense because I like to extend the play and roll out to the right side or roll out to the left side. And I like to try to make the play as long as possible to try to get a receiver open and a lot of times it results in a sack honestly but rushing Samaj P. Ryan 279 attempts 2,000 yards 34 touchdowns um well one he's the first Oklahoma running back to break 30 touchdowns in a season he's also the first Oklahoma running back to run for 2,000 yards in a season so that was pretty good Baker Mayfield had over 600 yards and 8 TDs Joe Mixon, who is probably going to be our starter next season, had 299 yards, average 7 yards a carry and 5 touchdowns. Uh, Corey Cannon, who is in a position to battle for the starting quarterback job next season. Dimitri Flowers, who had a touchdown. And Justice Hansen, who had 3 carries for 11 yards. I didn't even know Jordan Smallwood had a run. Okay. Now look at receiving. Um, with the way I run my offense, once again... It's a lot of deep throws, so we don't get a lot of receptions, but we get a ton of yardage. So Makai Quick, 1,200 receiving yards, average 23 yards a catch, 10 touchdowns. Jordan Smallwood, 718 yards, 12 TDs. Samaj P. Ryan, two touchdowns. Jeffrey Mee didn't have quite the year I was expecting him to. Um, I think it's a lot due to he wasn't really that fast. And he did really good in Season 3, but Season 4 he just really couldn't do a lot. Then we had our new tight end, Marcus Moyer. Um, I think this is the first season he played. He caught two touchdowns. He did pretty good. Mark Andrews actually never got into the end zone, which was kind of surprising to me because he he caught a lot of deep balls. Like, he got us out of a lot of situations but could never find the end zone. Then we have Dallas Todd, who is going to be a senior next season, and he hasn't really played a lot. Um, I think we can actually look at his career stats right here. Yeah, in his career, he has 15 catches for 360 yards and four touchdowns. And uh, he caught more passes this year, one more pass, but got less yardage and same amount of touchdowns. And then we had Alan Melton, a freshman redshirt, who didn't get a lot of playing time, but did have five catches for 83 yards and a touchdown. And he, I think, was the number one receiver in his class, so he should be pretty good. Then Joe Mixon caught a few. Uh, Derek Martin, our backup tight end, caught one. And Dimitri Flowers caught one pass but did not get into the end zone. And now we look at blocking. Um, this ended up kind of being a problem in the championship game. Because I was getting hardly any time. So my JP Ryan only let up one sack but he only pancaked one guy. And as you can see, we're losing our starting left tackle. Uh, these three are juniors, and then our starting right guard is a senior. So that kind of poses a problem because our recruiting for linemen hasn't been that great, I don't believe. Let's check out defensive. 
and the leader of our defense, Steven Parker, seemed like he was in on almost every play. 90 solo tackles, 92 total tackles. Um, seven tackles for loss. He did get one sack, four picks, and did he get into the end zone? He did force a fumble also. He was easily the best player on defense this year. He did get one touchdown. Um, he was kind of like, I don't know how many of you guys are Eagles fans, but you should know who this guy's. He was kind of like our Brian Dawkins. Like, he was all over the place, and he could do almost everything. And he made a few clutch plays this season. There was one against Baylor where we needed to stop him on third down, and it was a screen. And he came all the way from his safety position to come up and make the tackle and get us the ball back, and we won the game. And then Charles Rice, our freshman middle linebacker, who was our other leader on defense, uh, 16 tackles for loss, 86 solo tackles, 6 sacks, he did have a pick, and I don't think he ever got into the end zone. Forced two fumbles, recovered one of them, and no, he did not ever get into the end zone, I don't believe. And then uh, someone who was kind of disappointing this season, Edward Parrish Jr., who I think through half the season I was calling Edward Prince Jr., um, he, he didn't do as well as I wanted him to. He got beat a lot on slants and stuff like that. He wasn't as fast, I guess, as I thought he was going to be. And uh, it really came back to bite us. Then Curtis Bolton, who is a junior, um, he still got a little bit room for improvement, but he played pretty decent. Then we have Devin Morris, our first-year starter at free safety, and he's already graduating. He made a few big plays this season, five interceptions. That was really his specialty. Wasn't really that great at tackling. I didn't even notice that, but Stephen Parker also had the most deflections on the team. Actually, no, that was Lavelle Pitts. But Pitts, uh, that's probably a lot of drop picks because that's what, that's what his specialty was. But then our true freshman, number one corner out of his class, Marcus Summers, 52 tackles, four tackles for loss. He did get one sack, three picks, and I believe he had two pick sixes, two deflections. And I kind of look at deflections as drop picks because that's what most of them are. Now, some of them are actually deflections, but... Yeah, I still look at them as drop picks. And Summers actually only had one pick six. I think the second one, he almost had a pick six. He almost and got tackled. Uh, but that was week one against UTSA where he picked off Cody Thomas. And then our other leader on defense, we have three of them. Steven Parker because he was in on the most plays. Rice because he was a tr uh, redshirt freshman and was all over the place. And then DJ Ward for this reason right here. 25 quarterback sacks. And now we'll go look at the record books here in a minute. Because that is at least the most sacks by a single player in Oklahoma, at Oklahoma in one season. Um, he obviously didn't have any picks and don't think he really did anything else. He did force two fumbles and recovered one. And returned it for 44 yards and a touchdown. Then we had Lavelle Pitts who was a sophomore red shirt so he will probably move to our number one corner spot next season which I'm kind of scared for because he's not that fast um, he did have six picks though he that was definitely his specialty as well if he could get around the ball he was normally catching it he had three pick sixes on the season Ahmad Thomas even had a pick six and uh, in real life I don't think that's happening but he did have four picks this season and Matt Diamond and then you can just kind of see the rest most of these are backups. Um, this is probably going to be our starting safety. Phil McGrew. He is probably going to take over the spot from Stephen Parker. And that's some pretty big shoes to fill. Uh, Jordan Small would even have a couple tackles. I think that was mainly due to the fact that all the picks I threw trying to get the ball to him. But he's a senior. I didn't know that. Great. So it looks like a lot of our receiving class is graduating. And kicking. Give it a second to load up because it likes to take a while for kicking. I know I missed at least... Okay, so I missed three with Kelvin Taylor this year, along with 59. All right, punting. Uh, we only punted the ball 19 times. This is the first season that Kelvin Taylor was here that I didn't also make him the punter because we had a decent punter, finally. And then kick return. Marcus Summers had 60 kick returns, 1,700 yards, and two touchdowns. Punt return. Mixon had 38 punt returns, 443 yards, averaged about 11 yards a return which is kind of mediocre. No touchdown, a long of 28. But now we will go back and go over here. And actually, real quick, I want to I want to go back season stats. 
because I want to see one how we did compared to the rest of the country and two okay so cannon went four of ten Hansa went five of nine but cannon has a much higher throw power so that is definitely something I'm gonna look into for that and let's see who led the NCAA and everything because I forgot to look at that a minute ago and number of attempts yeah it was nowhere near us Tanner Lee uh, quarterback at Tulane I think that's the school um, Baker Mayfield was second in passing yards. We had a pretty balanced offense this season. Only one that went higher was Kevin Olsen at Miami. Touchdowns, yeah, it wasn't us. Interceptions, that might be us. We are tied with a bunch of quarterbacks at kind of bad schools. Or not bad schools, but bad football teams. Rushing-wise, yeah, we already know who's going to be at the top of that. Samaj P. Ryan, 2,008 yards. Average, uh, he was third. Mixon was they're both two running backs in the top ten. That's not horrible. It's actually very good. Yeah, we we definitely won the touchdown. Ezekiel Elliott, I thought he graduated. Okay, uh, yards per game is also gonna be us. Broken tackles. Um, a quarterback from Old Dominion broke 42 tackles. Who fumbled the ball the most? Baker Mayfield. Great. That was something that uh, was a big problem with this offense because I do like to run with the quarterback a lot, too. I talked about earlier how I like to roll out and extend the play. Well, if no one's open, then I run. Baker didn't have high carrying. Receiving-wise, I don't think we're going to be anywhere near any of these lists at the top. Oh, Makai Quick's actually in the first list that you see, 1,200 yards. Uh, we may be leading the average. Makai Quick is. Jordan Smallwood is third. Touchdowns. Braxton Berrios from Miami, 5'9", 186. It's like Philip Dorsett. Or Dorsett, whatever his name is. Who let up the most sacks? Because I'm curious. East Carolina, right tackle, okay. Defensively, who made the most solo tackles? Oh, wow. That's crazy. That we have that many making solo tackles. That's gotta be, there's something wrong with that. Because it said this guy made 126, but only 47 solo tackled. Is that normal to have that many assisted tackles? Okay. Sack. Mm, DJ Ward. Matt Diamond's up there too in double digits. Interceptions. Okay, yeah, we're not near the top of that. Um, the longest pick six. Steven Parker, 100 yards. Uh, that was actually against Michigan. I remember that. Force fumble. Oh, wow. Uh, left in from New Mexico State. Fumble recoveries. Okay. Yards. Uh, anyone block any kick? Oh, wow, a lot of people block kicks. Okay. Safety? Yeah, none for us. Oh, wait, who had the most defensive touchdowns? Lavelle Pitts with his three pick sixes. Kicking, who was the most accurate? It's not going to be Kelvin Taylor. And uh, I didn't kick a realistic amount of field goals anyway. But the kicker from Washington went 25 of 25. All right. Yeah, you deserve that uh, best kicker award. Um, Scott Mixon, the punter from East Carolina, had the most attempts. I'm not really sure if you want that, though. I, I don't want that award. I don't want the award for most punts in the season. And then Marcus Summers, only he was second in kick return amount. Oh, he was first in yardage and first in touchdowns. He only had two. I can't remember who his first one was against, but I know his second one was in the Big 12 championship game. It opened up the second half. Punt return, did anyone score a touchdown? Uh, Deshaun Hamilton from Penn State got a touchdown. Okay. So that's it for all the stats and stuff. Now we'll look at awards and bowl games. Uh, I think I have to go over to the ESPN bracket for it. And the Heisman winner, I probably mentioned. I haven't commentated the national championship game yet or even edited it. But Samaj P. Ryan is your Heisman winner which is something that I wanted going into the season I wanted to get a Heisman winner because I figured Samaje was gonna be our only hope through the rest of this series and uh, 34 touchdowns definitely can do it no longer the quarterback award okay so now we will look at the other award winners and uh, we had quite a few the Maxwell Samaje P Ryan the Walter Camp Samaje P Ryan the Bednarik award Look at all these defensive players. We had the top three, but Charles Rice ends up winning it. 
The Nagurski, um, we have the top two. DJ Warden's up winning it. O'Brien, uh, yeah, we weren't anywhere near that. As that is the best quarterbacks in that. 19 picks. Not really, um, you know, a good candidate for that. The Doak Walker Award was some AJ P. Ryan. The Bolitnikov, Braxton Berrios. Okay, sorry about that. I had to sneeze. But the Bolitnikov winner was Braxton Berrios. The Mackey was Cameron Knight. Uh, yeah, we're not going to be anywhere near that list as our tight end only had like two touchdowns. The Outland Award. Uh, we actually had someone on there. Alex Dalton. Uh, I guess he was a really good lineman this season. Actually, what side did he play? Right? Yeah, he never really got hit from that right side. The Remington, nowhere near it. I believe that is best center. The Lombardi Award goes to DJ Ward with Matt Diamond being second. Best linebacker, a redshirt freshman, Charles Rice. That is absolutely ridiculous. The Thorpe Award, which I believe is the best secondary player, goes to Stephen Parker. And then, you know, that we had two in between, but then just a bunch of Oklahoma players. Which I'm surprised Edward Parrish Jr. is up there with how many times he got beat. And he's only a junior. I thought he was a senior. So I guess we're, we're only losing our safeties this offseason, hopefully. The Groza Award, best kicker. Yeah, we don't have that. Newsome, we don't have that. Or what? It's just the best. Or the Ray Guy Award, which is the punter award. Oh, we don't have that. The best returner, though, was Marcus Summers. So for the second year in a row, we get the best returners. This one actually surprised me. Um, last season didn't because I think Alex Ross had nine punt ret or kick returns for touchdown. So, you know, it wasn't really a huge surprise, but uh, this one kind of surprised me. I didn't think he'd get it. But that's it for all the awards. And now we go to the bowl results just to kind of see how everyone else did around the country. So Temple beat Washington or Wyoming. Um, Utah State beat Kent State. Louisville beat San Jose State. Georgia State beat Florida International. New Mexico State beat Rice. Stanford shut out San Diego State. Florida Atlantic lost to Boise. Northwestern beat Western Michigan. Navy beat Akron. TCU beat Washington. Northern Illinois beat Pittsburgh. Maryland beat Syracuse. Georgia Tech beat USF. Michigan State beat BYU. BYU, this was their uh, first season in the Big 12, and they did not do good at all. I think we blew them out. They almost, actually, I think they almost made the bit. No, it wasn't them. Uh, the Big 12 Championship came down to Kansas, West Virginia, and... Oh, uh, there was someone else. I'll go look at the conference standings and tell you, but... Then we have Fresno State over Marshall. Oregon beat the crap out of NC State. West Virginia beat Arizona State. Big 12 is doing pretty good besides BYU. Baylor beat Indiana. Kentucky beat North Carolina. Virginia Tech beat USC. LSU beat North Texas, who actually is apparently becoming a good football team at 9-5. and five. Georgia beat Clemson. Or no, Clemson beat Georgia. I apologize for that. Uh, Michigan beat Eastern Michigan. Penn State beat Ole Miss. South Carolina beat Nebraska. Alabama beat Wisconsin by 7. Florida lost to the Air Force team. The Air Force team was actually number one in the country for a while. I didn't think that they were going to lose, and I thought we were going to get screwed out of the national championship because it would have been like Air Force at 13-0 or something like that and um, Notre Dame at 12-0, 13-0, whatever they're at. And uh, But I think Navy ended up beating them. Actually, I want to check that real quick. Let's see. Did Navy end up beating... I can't check that, can I? Apparently, I can't check that here. Okay, I thought I could. Um, Florida State beat Arizona, and I saw that run across the bottom of the screen while I was playing the National Championship game. That game went into OT. That would have been a pretty fun game to watch. Auburn beat Miami. Ohio State beat UCLA by three. Texas beat Texas A&M. UCF beat Army. Miami of Ohio beat Troy. And then, your national championship game, the Oklahoma Sooners defeated Notre Dame 37-34. to Which was a very, very fun game to play. Winner, had I won or lost that game, that, that was an incredible game to play. It was back and forth. It was fun. It was down to the wire. But, um, 
real quick, let's check the conference standings because I'm trying to remember who we could have played. Okay, it was BYU, I guess. Yeah, the way this was all setting up is had BYU won their last game of the regular season, they would have been in. Had BYU lost and Kansas won, then Kansas would have gotten in. And then West Virginia needed BYU and Kansas to lose, and then West Virginia had to win. BYU lost to... Let's see who BYU lost to. They lost to Texas 24-45, to and Kansas lost to Iowa State 35-38. to They were three points away from getting to go to the Big 12 Championship and screwed it up. And then West Virginia beat... TCU 35 to 30 to get to get into the Big 12 championship game where they lost to us 24 to 41. So that was that was interesting to see play out near the end of the season. The um, I'll go back to the conference standings real quick, but the Big 12 North or the Big 12 South was obviously the better conference. We had a 9 and 0 team and a 7 and 1 team, and then our 4 and 4, 3 and 5, 1 and 7. Thank you Texas Tech for ruining that. And uh, if I go back up to the Big 12 North, five and four, four and four, four and four, three and five, three and five, two and six. So yeah, we were obviously the better conference this season. Uh, we will see if that changes at all next season. Let's go ahead and look at the All-American, just because I'm kind of curious. Um, Samaj P. Ryan, obviously. Sears, our left guard, who's a junior. Alex Dalton, our right guard. Yeah, this is the reason I don't think I was ever touched from the right side of the offensive line. These two held it down pretty good. Then you got DJ Ward winning the left, or getting left in. Oh my god. Okay, so three out of the four members of our D-line are on the All-American team. Okay. Charles Rice is the middle linebacker for it. Cornerback is Lavelle Pitts. Devin Morris is the safety. Alright, so our secondary made it, except for Edward Paris Jr., um, second team. Okay, so we have another one of our linemen here. Uh, anyone else? And then our other member of our second, or our D-line, Brandon Lee. And then here's the rest of our secondary. Marcus Summers actually made it. And Ahmad Thomas. Ahmad Thomas was our backup strong safety, and he made it, really? Oh, he did actually play a lot of cornerback. That was probably the reason. The freshman All-American team, Brad Watson, was the starting quarterback for Tennessee this season. Um, unless... Okay, so Rice made it, and McDougal made it. Summers made it, and I think that's going to be it for us on that. So, yeah, we had a few people make the All-American team and the All-Freshman team. But now, let's head into the end of the season and get into the off-season of this. All in all, I think this was probably my favorite year so far of the series because... We had, like, obviously going undefeated and winning the championship is a big part of that. But having Samaj P. Ryan just tear it up every week. Having Baker Mayfield, who could make medium throws very accurately, couldn't make a lot of deep throws. If Baker Mayfield, say, had like a 94, 95 throw power, I think we would have blown everybody out of the water. And they are not going to give us a contract extension this year, but, you know, I'm not too worried about that as we have either won the championship or the Big 12 every year of this contract. And as you can tell, where we started was the 12-1 season, which just has the BCS championship, because we did not win the Big 12 that year. Texas won it. That was before we had a championship game. Um, the Big 12 championship we won at 11-2, and and then we lost our bowl game to Oregon that year. And then last season was the first time we won the Big 12 and our bowl game, which was the Cotton Bowl against god who did we play i don't remember who we played and then we had this season the big 12 championship and the bcs national championship so this was a pretty good year and probably my favorite uh we're not gonna change coaches so let's just go ahead and advance the players leaving where i normally cry in the off season because senior year is where everyone plays their best like stephen parker Parker had played good throughout his entire time here, but he tore it up this season. And I had to take a drink of water. Sorry about that. But, um, 
yeah, this season was a ton of fun, especially with that secondary. That was the only problem that we really had on defense this year <clears throat> was that our secondary sometimes wasn't fast enough, or at least our DBs weren't. And our safeties were only pretty fast, but our cornerbacks would get beat all the time, and that's why Stephen Parker had so many tackles, I think. Because, like, they would get beat on a slant, and then Parker would be there waiting for them. And we had to get a new offensive coordinator. Are you kidding me? I can tell because I have 21 offensive coordinator updates. Um, okay, let's, let's go to Big 12. Let's see what happened to us. Um, who did we hire? Um, we brought back Josh Heupel. We fired him after season one, and we brought him back. Because Franklin left for a new job. And we got rid of Mike Stoops and brought in Mark DeOnfrio. And these coordinators aren't that good. Look at that. Prestige is C- for Josh Eiffel. And C for Mark Dion. I don't even know how to say his name. Um, it's a good thing I run everything because, uh, yeah, Heifel's not good. That, that seems like something Stoops would do, though. You know, I love the Sooners in real life, but and in this game, too. But I feel like since he fired Heifel this season, if Heifel like, did something decent at wherever he went, because I know he got hired somewhere else, I feel like we'd bring him back pretty quick. But our defensive coordinator is already uh, pretty stacked up, but I've got to put everything back into our offensive coordinator, really? Um, I guess I'm going to be working on this all season. I'm just going to, uh, yeah, just upgrade that a lot. Um, okay, so we've got six left, so we'll just upgrade these to the max. Heifel, you better be good this season. Yeah, that's ridiculous. I can't believe we hired Josh Heupel back. The return of Heupel. Let's hope that doesn't happen in real life. As long as Lincoln Riley is a good offensive coordinator in real life, then I'm okay with it. Okay, and now we will go see if um, anyone else in our conference decided to leave. Let's see. Um, the Baylor gave all their coaches extensions or Baylor gave two of their coordinators extensions and Houston um, gave their coach an extension don't really understand that um, Iowa State fired all of their coaches which is understandable uh, Kansas gave their coaches extensions I would too because they turned that team around pretty fast uh, Kansas had coach or Kansas State's head coach retired uh, Franklin left for a new job. Stoops' contract expired and we didn't re-sign him. TCU got a new defensive coordinator because their other one retired. Um, TCU hired Cliff Kingsbury as offensive coordinator. The Weave is going to like that one. In case you don't know who the Weave is, he's one of my friends. But uh, Cliff Kingsbury goes to TCU. Okay. And Tommy uh, Tuberville goes to be the offensive coordinator at Texas. Uh, all right, Texas Tech got a new defensive coordinator, new head coach, but didn't get a new offensive coordinator. That's interesting. And Bill Legg, who I believe was our defensive, our offensive or defensive coordinator at one point, um, is now the head coach at West Virginia. I think after Heupel left, he took a job at Tennessee, and we played them and beat them. I think that's what happened. I, I vaguely remember that from like season two, but that's interesting. So let's go to players leaving now and um, see where that takes us. Um, yeah, you're not leaving. Wow, he would go in the fourth round of the draft. Uh, yeah, let's see if we can get a kicker and like the get our kicker to be drafted in the third round. That'd be crazy. Okay, so Steven Parker's leaving. He's a senior. Micaiah Quick's leaving. Baker Mayfield's leaving. And Samaj P. Ryan is leaving. All four of them projected to go in the first round. I I like that. I like that I turned it into that. Ahmad Thomas, who never started a game a day in his life, or at least not at Oklahoma, is going to be a projected round two. 
Alex Dalton, round three. Um, do we have any juniors? Okay, so no other juniors are trying to leave. I'm looking at some of these players to see. Devin Morris is not going to the NFL. He's just going to graduate and go on with his life. Okay. DJ Ward is projected. Oh, it's his overall. I'm about to say, dude, you had 25 sacks. How are you projected to go on the seventh? So ratings-wise, we didn't have that good of a team. And Smallwood led the team in touchdowns, but is still projected to go in round seven. Whatever. If someone gets them around seven, they're going to steal. Okay, so first, let's check out these draft results and see what happened in the draft. Uh, Mayfield, just like they projected. Okay, whatever they project happens, like most of the time. So we had four seventh round picks, um, two thirds, a second, and four first. That's ridiculous. And now, is anyone wanting to transfer to us? Please transfer to us. No one's wanting to transfer to us. No one transferred away this year either. That's good. Okay, so now I'm going to head into recruiting and show you who we have gotten so far. We still have nine scholarships to give out, which is, I think, the most I've ever had coming into the offseason video. Um, but let's scroll down here. We have Jamal Brown, an athlete that we will see what he plays once um, we get to that stage. Avery Kelly, another athlete. Mario Porter, a new strong safety that I recruited to replace Stephen Parker, but he's probably not going to play this season, obviously. Will Hill, the number one defensive tackle. Actually, what was Jamal Brown? The number two athlete. And Avery Kelly was the number 11. Number two strong safety. And then Will Hill, the number one defensive tackle we got. We also got the number 17 athlete. I like athletes. Andre Smith, the number three defensive tackle. Colin McGee, the number 29 athlete. A number six defensive tackle. So our D line is going to be pretty stacked. At least the defensive tackle is part of it. Mike Hayes, the number 36 receiver. I don't really know why he committed to us. He's probably not going to get playing time. A running back. Um, we got a new quarterback that I didn't scout. He just committed to us. I did not scout this quarterback. All right, I think I ended up scouting him once he committed to us or something, once I saw that he was probably going to commit to us. But as you can see, his throw accuracy is not that high. So he's going to need a lot of work before he steps on the field as a Sooner. Then we got a new offensive lineman, the number nine tackle, the number 21 defensive end. Number 31 center, number 94 tackle, and the number 104 outside linebacker. And that is so far what we have. And I believe team needs are all filled. So the rest of this is just going to be what I think we need. And uh, I would love to get this pass rusher, so let's offer him a scholarship. Um, Michael Yancey. I mean, it'd be kind of cool to have him, but if we could get one of these other ones for a lot less point suspend actually let's let's scout them let's see what who has the higher ratings real quick all right he's a gym and he's not so yeah we're gonna we're gonna throw a bunch of points into this and uh, in a couple years RT line is gonna be stacked if I can if I can get him that's gonna be the question I'm gonna put like 3,000 points into him 6 5 242 it's more like a linebacker more than a D lineman I guess it could be a D lineman uh, let's just put 3,500 into him. You know what? No, 4,000. Yes, I'm putting 4,000 points into one player again. Um, we still need some offensive line help because we did just graduate some of them. So let's go ahead and throw like 1,000 points into this guy. And if we scout him, he's not that good. So he's going to be a project. Uh, Brian Battle. Okay, so the rest of these guys I don't feel like um, putting points into because I don't think they're going to be that good. Uh, let's go. Yeah, let's just go ahead and throw some points into him so we don't lose Michael Mathis. And we're also going to hope he's good. Uh, we're going to throw 3,000 points into him to make sure we don't lose him. And I, could, I can still add some players to our board from the actual, like, scouting thing. And another gem. So if we get two gems for defensive ends and just throw one at left end and one at right end in a couple seasons, that'd be ridiculous. Oh, he's only 5'11", 242. So our d line is going to, like, shrink as it goes, but, you know, whatever. So let's go check out and let's look at some of the players who have not committed yet. So percent locked. We're going to go less than 25%. 132 people are still at less than 25%. Any five-star players? Okay, no. Um, this guy wants to come play for us. But we already have a running back and Bryce Irvin that we got last season. 
Uh, you can never have too many receivers. I guess. So we'll go ahead and add him to the board. Um, I want to add more DBs. I want to add some fast DBs. So let's... We're going to just scout them based solely on 40 time. You are in a 4740. You're not going to any decent school, sir. Um, we got Jason Peters, who is actually an Eagles offensive lineman. And these guys are going to need a lot of work. But... I want to get some fast secondary players. And these guys may get cut if their stats aren't good. Like, because I can't obviously keep everybody. I'm going to scout these three. If one, Actually, I'll, I'll scout him too. But if one of them wants to come play for us, but they can't, and I need to, if I need to cut people and they can't compete with the others, then they're gone. That's just the way I'm going to do this. And let's go look at cornerback now as we have four up here on the board. Offer them all scholarships because I want them all to come play for us. And I'll throw a little bit of points into each of them. Okay, Jeff Ryan. Actually, let's scout them before we throw any points. That's what we're going to do right now. 89 speed. That's not good. 93 speed. That's pretty good. So, Steve Brooks. I'm going to throw a thousand points into you. And he's got good man coverage and good zone. You would probably make a better safety. I'll have to see how tall he is because he might make a better safety than DB. Uh, we'll throw 2,500 points in him. I'll tell you, he's six foot. That's a that's safety like levels, but we'll we'll keep it right now. Uh, that's not fast, and that's not fast. So okay, this guy would be able to keep up as long as I don't play him against any really fast receivers, which means probably keep him out of the slot. And we still have 3,000 points, so let's go back and let's see what else we can get. Let's go to less than 50% and see if there's any four or five star players. That'd be good. Four or five star caliber players. Never ha You can never have too many five star recruits. Um, this guy runs a 4-3-6-40. Um, I think he'd be ready. He's a Juco uh, junior already. So, I mean, I could throw him in with us. 4 3 6 40. That's ridiculous. Ryan Martin, 6 foot 2, a 4 3 8 40. Yep, we're getting added to the board. Um, Larry Bell. Okay, well, one. Let's look at this guy. He runs a 4 4 2, and he's a four star recruit and interested in us. You know, I don't even care. You can never. I don't think you can have too many receivers. So, I mean, you there is a limit, but. Um, is there any fast QBs? I know I said I don't want to scout any quarterbacks, but let's see if there's a really fast QB. This guy's interested in us. Jonathan Mitchell runs a 4-7. Okay, and yeah, none of those are particularly that fast. Um, I think we're going to add Larry Bell. We have him, and we have Johnson. We're going to put a lot of points into Johnson because I want Johnson to come to us. So we're going to throw um, some into that receiver uh, that we, the low rank receiver, and then some into the high rank. Uh, go into scouting. Okay, this was the guy that ran like a 4-3-6 or whatever. Okay, he can't accelerate, but he is pretty fast. What's your return? A 63. Um, Steven Johnson, you're not that good at accelerating. Okay. None of these players I'm adding are particularly good. We are going to still scout this guy. I guess you can kind of work on acceleration. Um, I mean, I'll throw like 1,500 into him or 2,000 into him. I'll do that. And this one that's fast but just takes a little bit of time to get up to that speed, I'll just throw the rest of the points into him. And uh, let's take 50 off him and offer this guy a scholarship. Okay, so there's our recruiting class. Let's hope we get some of them. I spent a little bit too much time on that. Way too much time than I probably should have. I think the last offseason video was 45 minutes. I think this one's going to be even longer than that. And now advance to the next stage. 
signing day. Please come play for us. That's what I want. You should all come play for us. We want to win more championships. It'd be good if I could go all the way up to season six and have four championships. And uh, I know I mentioned in the summer 2015 video, which was a few weeks ago, I guess, that um, at the end of season six, I'm going to let you guys decide. I'm still going to continue. I'm going to do season five, going to do season six. But at the end of season six, you guys are going to get to decide if I should continue on into season seven or if I should start a new dynasty with someone else or with OU again and have updated rosters once again, get the new rosters. Um, we got Michael Yancey and Michael Mathis, which is the two players that I wanted. Did we get that receiver? No, we did not get that receiver. Ryan Martin went to Bowling Green. And where did the other one go? There was not. Steven Johnson went to UCLA. Okay, so uh, we did get the number one class. I saw that in the uh, rewards. Okay, so signing day. Let's see who didn't commit to any schools on our list. Um, Jeff Ryan did not commit anywhere. Really, dude? Oh, I never put any points into him, did I? And I didn't offer him a scholarship. Oops. Okay, so we got Michael Yancey. Uh, Brian Buchanan did not come to us. Steven Johnson did not. Jason Peters did not. Shannon Peterson did not. Steve Brooks did not. Um... But, you know what, we got Michael Mathis, and we got Michael Yancey, which I think is going to be the highlight of this recruiting class, honestly. I think that is I think that is the two biggest things we could have added. We got, I think, the top D-line in this class. Okay, so I'm here at position changes, and we have four athletes to sort out. Um, you don't have that high of speed, so if you're best at cornerback, sorry. Okay, where in the world are you an 81 overall at? Receiver? It is receiver, but you're not that fast. He's got 89 speed and 94 acceleration. He's 6'2". Where else can you play? Because I think we have, we have plenty of receivers. Um, how many receivers do we have right now on the roster? But a lot of them are senior. We're going to lose... We're going to lose three more after this season. We're going to lose um, Jeffrey Mead, Mark Andrews, and Dallas Todd. And then it's just a bunch of young kids. And you're probably going to get cut. You're not that good. You're not fast. You don't have good acceleration. You're not going to fit this offense. Sorry, but you're probably getting cut. I don't like to cut true freshmen before they even step on the field, but... I mean, it's got to be done. Um, Alan Melton may actually be our number two this year, even though he's kind of low on the ratings. He may be our number two. Jeffrey Mead's probably going to be our number one, even though he's not really that fast. Um, so I guess uh, this guy right here, got 89 speed. What's your catching? If you can catch, I might throw you back at safety. You have 80 catching. That's not what I like my receiver. Let's see what um, everyone else is at for catching on this receiving team. Um, for catching, 99, 99, 89, 83. So you would need a year to sit. Or I could throw you back there at free safety now, and you can probably compete with Matt Williams. Um, what is his catching? 76. What's his uh, zone and man coverage? 84 and 85. Tom Palmer might be able to compete for the starting job. Hold on. You got better zone. I run a lot of zone with my safeties. Um, yeah, but this guy's faster, and he's only one point difference. So what I'm going to do for this athlete is I'm going to put him at receiver for right now and redshirt him this season. Casey Fountain, 77 overall. Where are you, 77? Of course you're an 82 overall receiver. What's your speed? A 98 with 93 acceleration. Oh, wow. You could be our slot receiver this year. I don't have a fast slot. Where? Uh, what's your catching? That's that's going to be a big issue. 
If you're a better DB than your receiver, 78. But he's got 90 spectacular catch. 83 route running. We're going to put this guy at receiver 2. And he might be our number 3 or 4 this season. Um, Avery Kelly. Are right, you make a good quarterback. 92 speed. Okay, I didn't want to put you at QB. Hold up. You need to come back, Avery Kelly. Um, you have 92 speed, 85 acceleration. But if your throw power is in at least like an 89 or something. 79? No, you're going to be another Baker Mayfield. Um, a halfback would be a good choice. Receiver. A strong safety or a free safety. What's your zone coverage and catching? 67 catching. Yeah, that's about average for a DB or a secondary player. Um, man coverage and zone coverage? I think you're going to make a better cornerback. Because he's got decent acceleration. Or decent uh, uh, speed and stuff. But low acceleration. So for right now, we're going to put you at free safety. We'll redshirt you. If I need to, I'll move you. Um, athlete, let's see, 92 speed, 93 acceleration, 72 break tackle, uh, 88 elusiveness. Okay, so this guy was a running back. Maybe running back receiver? Yeah, how would you do back there in the secondary? Pretty freaking bad. So we're going to put you at running back, even though you're not going to play this season. There's, there's no way you probably won't even step on the field till your senior year. Because you got a uh, Colin, so um, all right, we got two twins here because they look the exact same. And then Mixon and I guess Jake Stanley will be splitting carries this year. I may make Mixon and Irvin split carries just to get Irvin some playing time and make Stanley our returner. Or I could make Colin McGee our returner. What's your elusiveness and agility? I think Colin McGee might be our returner. He kind of has the same stats as um, Alex Ross did. So be ready for more unrealistic kick returns because I'm going to go back to them. Especially if this kid lets me. So, uh, McGee, you may be relegated to kick return duties. But uh, that's it for that. Actually, let's see if there's any... Um, let's see how good our DBs are this year. How was Edward Paris not keeping up with defenders last year? That's ridiculous. And he's only going to get better. Because we are not even at um, training results yet. And now we are going to be at training results. And this is one of my favorite parts of the offseason. Because you get to see how good your team is now. And if um, Hanson doesn't have like 90 throw power, he's not... No, I'm going to say 92 or 93 throw power. If he doesn't have 92 or 93 throw power, um, he's not guaranteed the starting job. Training results. I don't care how good his overall is. Because he's at 99 overall now. But if he doesn't have good throw power, I'm not having another Baker Mayfield just faster. I have three viable options at quarterback here. So Cannon has lower speed and lower acceleration and lower awareness. But let's look at some of this other stuff. Throw power, 92. Actually, Mark Bailey has a 93. Accuracy is um, going to go to Hanson, but Bailey may be a viable starter. I didn't even think of Mark Bailey being the starter. Let's see how fast he is. Uh, can I get a, a stat for throwing on the run? Uh, your stamina isn't that high, Corey. That's going to be a problem. Especially with how much I run the ball. Or at least with the QB. Um, I don't know. Apparently we're going to have a quarterback battle. Because I have three very, very good options here at QB. I would say right now the favorite is probably Cannon. Because he is the one I've used the most. He's got stats that I like. And Bailey's speed is kind of low. Is well, not low for a quarterback, but low for how I like it. Um, I would say right now the favorite's Cannon. Right now the favorite is Corey Cannon. But we will see how every other position's doing. Running back, Mixon, 
All right, you're you got 99 acceleration now. Good. Uh, you have some pretty big shoes to fill. And then Jake Stanley, Bryce Irvin actually increased his speed. He upped his acceleration by three. Irvin is going to be a speed demon whenever he gets to actual playing uh, football here at Oklahoma. Fullback, um, 88 overall, Dimitri Flowers. We do have a backup, but uh, he'll take over next season. Wide receiver, Jeffrey Meade. You didn't get any faster. You up your acceleration, which is good. Got something. Melton, 96 speed, 97 acceleration. That's it. Melton's our number two. That Those stats are too good to pass up. What's your catching? 87. And yours up to 94. So, yeah. Melton's going to be our number two. Todd's probably going to be our number three. And we'll see how the rest of the depth chart works out. Marcus Moyer going into his junior season. Uh, 89 overall. One thing I noticed about him last season, can he not block at all? Let's see if he can block because and I think I may have passed it. Nope. 75 pass block, 81 run block. So he can run block, but he can't really do pass blocking that well. Uh, left tackle. We have a 91 overall. Okay. Left guard. 96 overall. So our center is probably going to be the weak spot of our O-line. A uh, right guard is a true, or not a true freshman, a redshirt freshman. And right tackle is going to be a 96 overall. And then we have John Marshall, who is 100% bald, starting at left end. Uh, right end, oh god. So I didn't scout defensive ends, apparently, until this season. Uh, middle linebacker Charles Rice goes up to an 84 overall. He was only a 79 overall last season, guys, and he did that. I'm excited for Charles Rice next season. Right aside linebacker, we still got Curtis Bolton, and then probably Corey Lee will take over his job. Cornerback Edward Perez now a 97 overall, 96 acceleration, 94 speed. Lavelle Pitts is still pretty good. Summers is still going to be our number three. Uh, Chris Washington is going to be our number four. Pretty much the same way it was last season. Except for safety, Matt Williams is going to be starting at free safety. And, or most likely. And strong safety will be Bill McGrew with his 80 speed. No. I'm not starting someone with 80 speed. They're going to get burned so bad. Kyle Hill, a redshirt freshman. What's your zone coverage? That's... Wait, wait. First, what's your catching? 73. Okay, so he can catch. And he can tackle. Not as good. Um, and he's not as good as everything. Speed is such an important factor, though. And with how much... Um, oops, sorry. Sorry. With how much Edward Parrish Jr. got burned last season, I'm afraid to start Bill McGrew back there, but Hill is not ready. That's going to be interesting to see how that plays out through the season. Kelvin Taylor going into a senior year, which means I need to scout a new kicker, is a 98 overall. Really, he never got to 99. I bet if I had made those three field goals, he'd be 99. Um, yeah, this is going to be at the very back, isn't it? 99 kick accuracy. Where's your kick power? Did I just go right off of it? No, I did not. Oh, it was already 99. Okay. Punter, you got better, right? Uh, yep, you're back here. Kick accuracy is a 75. Kick power is an 86. Okay, so he's decent. So that's how good everyone got. Um, we have a, we have a, we have a few position battles, which is gonna be interesting. Okay, so we have to cut six people. Um, Dawson, don't want to cut you. I don't want to cut anyone of you. Fullback, all right, can't cut you because you're pretty good. Um, Haynes is just... Hold on. And my headphones coming out of my ear. Please don't. Okay. So Haynes is um obviously not the best option here. So Haynes is gone. I don't like cutting true freshmen before they step on the field, but uh, his his stats just weren't they weren't showing much. And uh, this guy's not that good. We'll check your pass blocking and stuff, but if you don't have something good, and I oh okay, 76 pass blocking, 70 run blocking, and you are probably gonna be. I mean, you'll never start because. Someone in your same class is right there. But you are not good. So, um, 
You can don't like trying cutting true freshmen, but if he's the best option to cut, I guess. Center, oh god. Um, I'm gonna let you develop because we don't have any centers. You are gone, sir. I'll lose my pipeline to Missouri. Okay, you may stay here for a second. Wait, what? It's saying he committed to Iowa State. Why is he on my team? Is he a walk-on? I think he's a walk-on. Okay. Because I've never seen a player that low rated come onto my team. Left end, um, you don't have the speed to compete, and you're also really not that good. So I still have Michael Yancey, which means I scouted that perfectly. And it looks like Mathis could start this season if I wanted him to. At right end. But left end is definitely going to be Marshall. Because Yancey still could improve there. But right end, Mathis is ready to play, apparently. DT, uh, don't want to cut any of you. We still need to cut three people. I don't think I can, I don't think I can cut this kid because um, he doesn't have a school. Actually, no, he has us highlighted. Um, but he's... Like, you can't really teach speed... And from what I can tell, this kid would make... He's got like a 76 juke. What was that? That is the most random thing for a linebacker to have. Um, 72 tackles, 67 hit power. Yeah, dude, you're gone. <laughs> like, I'm cutting so many true freshmen here, but... I'm also looking at people that are so far down on their depth chart, so late in their careers, they're probably not going to get to play. Um, uh, don't want to cut you. Don't want to cut you. Did I accidentally pick up another punter? No. Okay. So now back to the start. Is there anyone super far down on any depth chart where they're not going to get to play? That's not highly rated. Um, no, you're, you're pretty good. So I'm not going to cut you. You know what? This right guard is never going to play on my team, so get out of here. I don't care if I lose my pipeline to Missouri. I don't scout a lot of players out of Missouri. Um, right tackle. I'll let you keep developing. I'll let you keep developing for right now. I thought about cutting him. So then you cut one more player. Um, all these guys are so good, though. I can't cut any of them. Brandon Lee, you're a junior. You're probably not going to get to play. This would be a huge cut, though. Because he, play, he played pretty good in the situations he came in last season. Chris Thompson, you're a junior. Um, 76 speed. Rice is playing amazing, so... I can't cut him. It would put us at a minimum. Are you kidding me? Um, Ray Smith, maybe? To, oh, wait. Let's just let's go check their tackling and stuff. Um, trying to figure this out. 73, 89 hit power. No, okay. So, I mean, he still no because these two are gonna have to compete. God, I don't want to cut any of these players. Oh, how about this guy, Vernon Anderson, sophomore, red shirt. Um, he's not really that fast. I think, honestly, no, Van Miller. Miller has to be the option, right? 79 speed, 84, or 79 acceleration, 84 speed. Um, yeah, sorry. Okay, so we're at 70 players. God, I that is my least favorite part of the offseason. I don't like cutting players. Okay, so preseason, we are going to be ranked number four in the country, which I don't agree with. But we did lose our quarterback and our running back, so I guess uh, four is probably the best bet. Or good choice. Um, okay, so... I don't want to change this in the middle of the season. Because last time I did that, um, if you don't remember, I had to simulate pass that week. So we're going to leave that there. But... Actually, can I... There's got to be another... Yeah, right there, Indiana. Why is that here? Make that open. And change this to... 
really, like, I want to play Akron week one. Just like Oklahoma in real life. This upcoming season. Um, can I play Akron here? Yes, I can. So that's going to be our first game is uh, week two against Akron. And who else can we add? Can I add Tulsa up here? Why does everyone have a game here? Who else is on our schedule for this season? I have it pulled up. Um, at Tennessee. And then it's Zip. The Akron Zips at Tennessee in the Tulsa Golden Hur Hurricanes. So, can I get Tennessee? Yes, I can. So, we're going to go to Tennessee. We're not playing Ohio State. Don't care. Not playing Ohio State. Can I add Tulsa here? That'd be good. Please, Tulsa. Are you kidding me? Okay, if I add Tulsa here, if is Tulsa's got to be here, right? So apparently Tulsa, I can't add to any schedule. Um, I don't want to play number eight like that. That's a meaningless game. And we can throw in. Um, what's a stadium I want to go to? I don't know. Uh, let's see. Looking through all of the options. You know, I want to take on Arizona State. So we're going to go to Arizona State. Let's make sure we have the right amount of home and away games. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three four five six look at many away games we have to start the season um if I change okay you know what we'll keep it because I can't change these and if I change uh, I don't want to go to Akron because <clears throat> that's not very realistic uh, I don't think we're gonna go there so I guess we're just gonna have <clears throat> I guess we're just going to have Alabama in the middle of the season. Which is probably... I'm imagining we'll beat these games pretty easily. And then we'll win these. Uh, Texas will probably give us a tough time. Probably beat Kansas. But then this is... I think this is going to be our toughest test of the entire season. But, yeah. So, we'll keep that schedule. Hopefully I won't have to simulate any games this season. Because that would be absolutely ridiculous if I did. Um... Let's see now who we're going to redshirt. Because that is something that we definitely need to look at. Quarterback. Justin Dawson. And you're not wearing number eight. Actually, you might. I'm not sure. Um, Nate Williams, you're getting redshirted. Colin McGee, uh, you're probably going to be our kick returner. So, yeah, you're fine. Receiver, we're going to redshirt both of these players. Actually, no. One of these guys is, could be like our slot this season. No. I'll redshirt him. I'll let him get better because his catching, I don't think, is that good. Right now, it's a 78. So, I'll let him get better. Casey Fountain, you could definitely be our slot receiver next season because we're going to have three people graduate. I would imagine Melton's going to go to number one, Hickman maybe to two, and then Fountain and the slot. So, that could be our season six lineup, but or season five lineup. but Or season, yeah, season six. We're lining up season five right now. Um, this guy probably get redshirted. We'll go ahead and redshirt him too. Anyone else that we should? Yancey, you're getting redshirted. I bet one of these left ends could go over and play right end. So I'm going to redshirt Mathis too, let him get better. And so I can keep him longer. And we have our DTs. All of these guys are getting redshirted. If you need to, you can pull the, like, you can take the red shirt off, but I don't think we'll need to, and I'm red shirting all of these people, and that is going to be our red shirt to this season, and now we will set the depth chart, which is actually normally pretty fun. Quarterback, right now, our favorite is Hanson. That's my favorite to start this season, and I'm going to be pretty stubborn about it, too. Because I went with a quarterback that had the best rating and everything else, but had the lowest throw power last season, and it cost us a lot. We did win the championship, but there, 
Had he not underthrown a lot of passes, we would not have been in a lot of situations. So, uh, we could go with Bailey. Bailey, I think, would be a good option. But he's just not as fast as I would like him to be. Cannon's kind of got everything. He's got throw power. He's got decent accuracy. He's got good speed. So, Corey Cannon right now, I believe, is going to be our starter. But that may change come week one. I'll do some practices off screen, see how everything goes. Bryce Irvin is going to be our backup running back. He will get a lot of carries. Or not a lot, but some. Receiver. Um, Melton, you are going to move into our number two spot. And do we have another fast receiver to play the slot? Freshman Ronald Hickman, six foot five. Um, because I like to have very, very fast guys in the slot. He's he's 6'5 with 95 speed. That's ridiculous. Um, but I, all right, yeah, we'll just we'll keep Todd there for right now. Obviously, you can change that in the middle of the season. Uh, tight end, we're good. Left tackle, we're good. Left guard, center, right guard, right tackle. So the only like position I'm kind of worried about is right guard. But that's a that's a redshirt freshman, and I was worried about middle linebacker last season because it was a redshirt freshman, and he did fine. Actually, great. So, yeah, that's that's what I expect to happen. Marshall start at left end. Poland to start at right end. Defensive tackle is going to be McDougal and Poland. That doesn't make sense. Probably McPoland, probably McDougal and Lee. Left outside linebacker, Zach Matthews, a sophomore redshirt. A redshirt sophomore. So that, that could be something to watch this season. Middle linebacker, you know who's starting. Right outside linebacker, Curtis Bolton. Defensive back, Edward Paris and Lavelle Pitts with Summers in the slot. Free safety, uh, we're going to go with Matt Williams. Strong safety, I would like to go with Kyle Hill, but he's not ready. So if McGrew starts getting burned early in the season... And it costs us some, like, big plays. If I notice that he's screwing up, despite ratings, I will throw Kyle Hill back there. Actually, I could throw Washington back there. 92, man, 92 zone. Um, but he's only got 65 tackling. Yeah, I don't like that. Okay, so Bill McGrew will be our starting strong safety if he starts getting burned kyle hill will be thrown in a kicker kelvin taylor punter um who's who is the better punter mcbride or taylor uh yeah we're gonna so mcbride is gonna sit there and collect his scholarship um kick return who was the guy i wanted to put back here it wasn't fountain it was a running back it wasn't Irvin. Um, oh, there he is. Colin McGee. That's how I wanted to start back here. 92 speed, 93 acceleration. Give him some playing time. And I also want to put McGee back there to return punts. So there we go. It's Colin McGee. And I believe now I can mess with uniforms and stuff, right? I think that's the next step that I want to do. Okay, so the first number change we're having is I'm changing Justice Hansen to his actual real-life number, which is four. So that looks a little bit more realistic. Um, I didn't know that was his real-life number up until uh, the spring game, which was just a month or so ago. And then for Charles Rice, um, I just want to change a few things about it. Is I don't like that Revolution helmet that he's wearing. So we're going to change that. Um, what about Revo Speed? What does that look like? I like that for him, even though I think that's more running back style. Um, we are going to give him a visor because Viker, or Vikers, <clears throat> visors make players look cool. Um, left sleeve, we are going to go with, uh, no, where is it at? Yeah, I want to go sleeve tight for him. That's what I make all my star players wear pretty much is tight sleeves. So that's going to be Charles Rice for this season, which I am very, very excited for. And then this is Justice Dawson, who was our new quarterback and I'm just trying to find something even though he's not going to see the field that much maybe standard will work best for you yeah we're just going to go with standard for him um you don't earn a visor yet and I don't like the sleeve standard so we're going to go sleeve tight and that about does it for him and that's going to 
pretty much do it for all the um, changes. We, we don't have a lot of freshmen playing this year. Once they get up to playing, then I'll change a lot of their stuff. But right now, there's red shirts. It doesn't really matter about the number and stuff. So I think that is going to be our final roster. Um, I will go into practice and practice with Corey Cannon and Justice Hansen, see how everyone does. But um, honestly, unless I say at the beginning of the video of the next uh, week one, that's what I meant to say, um, expect Corey Cannon to be the starter because uh, that's what I recruited him and brought him in for was to be the starting quarterback for season five and six. And I was waiting to see how Hanson developed because I knew we had low throw power. It never got better. Um, I'm just going to probably start Cannon or Mark Bailey. One of those two will probably be the starters because I don't want to deal with another low throw power. But anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this Season 4 offseason video. And Season 5 will hopefully come within the next, I'm going to play it safe and say two weeks.